This is what Ali did that was so tremendous back in uh, back in the seven when he fought Joe Frazier for the first time. And it's funny to me because it was amazing. Because I went back, I seen it, and I'm like, Muhammad Ali clearly lost the fight. Like, there was no controversy with the decision. And Frazier even punctuated with the knockdown to make sure he wanted everybody to know he beat him. Not saying Ali didn't win some rounds. But these are 15 round fights and definitely Frazier won the majority of those rounds. While everyone was feeling sad and down because the world knew Ali really lost this fight. Now one judge had it ridiculous of course. You always got that and it's been going back since the beginning of time. He had it like 11 rounds to 4 for Frazier. He was there to screw Ali no matter what. That one judge. Now once the fight was over people crying down the Ross crying and he was like, cheer up. You know, I just made $10 million. <laughs> and so the whole world is waiting for Muhammad Ali post fight and wanting to see what he does when he comes to the podium. The media, they're just like, this is it. This is our golden nugget. His first defeat in the ring. He sits there and says, I won this fight. And so what? He got one knockdown. Look at it. Look at the man's face, and look at my face. I got my one little jaw size swollen, but that's about it. I don't have no cuts, no scars. If you look at him and look at the damage on him, that man had to go straight to the hospital. How is he the winner? He turned everyone's perception around. Once the post-fight interview was over, it was all. All about a conspiracy to rob Muhammad Ali. That became the story. So even though Frazier won the fight, his glory is being tainted because of what Ali said. So Frazier was talking about retiring after the fight. Everything, you know, he was just a very emotional man. Very proud man. Very emotional. So he wanted to make sure he put out quality. What it did was set the stage for the rematch to happen years and years later. Ali wasn't ready for that fight. And they knew it. Realistically, he was not ready to fight Joe Frazier. After the long layoff, those fights he had in between, that, that meant nothing. He was not ready for that caliber of a fighter, which meant that Ali wasn't in physical condition, like he was physically able, he wasn't Ali, he was slow, pushy with his punches, you know, and just not on his, you know, he wasn't on the square, he wasn't on the ball when he should have been, and he needed to be back for a couple of years before he got back to Frazier. So the fight that no one talks about is the second fight. See the second fight is where it all went left. The problems that they had in the first fight wasn't going to exist in the second one. You see the thing was Frazier had lost the title to Foreman. So Foreman was the champion. Big George Foreman. And people thought, man, Ali should even fight him because he would destroy Ali. You know, so they weren't even pushing for Muhammad Ali to fight him. They were just like, Ali shouldn't even go that route. 
So Frazier fight the rematch because of the first fight. This time the referee, and the reason why they don't talk about it is because the referee was in there and Muhammad Ali had become such a huge name in the sport again and people were smarter this time to say why would we sit something down and suspend him over something as dumb as not deploying for a war and give it all that attention when we could make money off of this this guy's a money generator whenever he comes around to an event the stands make money, everything starts making money. So finally, people who make money off of this reverse these decisions. So they need Ali to win. No matter how much Frazier was pro-America, blue-collar, go to work, take care of his family, good guy, to them, he was bored. The people didn't back him. And what Ali did was captivating. When he did his press interviews, it was too captivating. People couldn't turn away. Even people who didn't like Muhammad Ali tuned in to listen to see what Muhammad Ali was going to say. So the fight was basically sabotaged. Ali was able to hold Frazier behind the head all night long and just lean on him. Every time George came in, he would get tired of Ali. Ali would hold, hit, hold him behind his head. Frazier complains, nothing happens. That's why they don't talk about the second fight. Go watch the Frazier Ali fight part two. All it is is Muhammad Ali holding Frazier behind the head. And coasting away to a victory because the referee wasn't going to be a part of that fight at all. He's going to let Ali do whatever Ali wanted to do. And they just railroaded Joe. So. But they go from the first fight to the thrill of Manila, don't they? And he and confuses people. Why he do that? But nobody really focuses on it though. They just go from that to the thrill of Manila and it's all right. They love it. No one stopped to say, what in the world happened? Didn't they fight a second time? Why no one talks about that fight? Go find that fight and watch it. You'll find great entertainment in it. But I love the way Ali came out and changed his people persona. He changed the way people thought about a fight they just watched. They watched it, they saw him lose, and then after he lost, people came out saying exactly what Ali said. Yeah, man, they tried to rob him. He won that fight. I'm like, wow. That's the power of words. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs>